Okay, Dennis and Jesse, thank you for being on here. And Jesse, this is the first time I'm meeting you. I talked to Dennis at length, so thank you for showing up. You're welcome. Happy to. Denny's just said a lot of awesome things about you, and I'm thank excited you. to finally meet you. Yeah, one of the things I really like is the way you network and pull people together. Your uh, new podcast uh, network is really cool. I've, we've thank had you. a lot of connections through that, actually. Awesome, and should be more. I'm just always trying to get more people on there. Everybody that comes on there, I've met at some point or we've yeah. had a conversation. So it's kind of vetted already when they come on, uh, which is nice. Yeah. Um, but somebody was telling me they loved like the diversity of pe like the different types of things people are doing, like um, the types of podcasts, yeah. some crazy stuff out there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I, that's actually one of the things that I like is, you know, you're not, you're not, uh, it's vetted, but you're not saying no to certain things, you know, yeah. and, no, it's like every everything's a part of the conversation. So that's really cool. Well, especially <clears throat> with sex is is something that I feel is important to talk about. And I think listeners love it the most. It's easily the biggest episodes always are sex episodes. Crazy, right? Okay. <clears throat> always. Yeah. So you guys, uh, I use your products. My wife and I use your products. They're amazing. My wife really loves it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I want to talk a little bit about how you guys came to this. How did this happen <laughs> with you guys? How did you meet? I want to know all the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we should start in the beginning then, I guess. Yeah. Well, I, the, our first meeting, actually, I was a senior in high school and she was a sixth grader. Oh. And uh, I was skating at the local ice rink and kind of working there, actually, and did a as a skate guard and she was out there and like riding her hand along the boards. And I was kind of like, Oh, can I, you know, help this person learn how to skate? Yeah. And, what did and you I do? just what? thought he was a dreamy high schooler. Like, <laughs> Oh my goodness, this guy is so hot and uh, <laughs> sure he can show me how to skate. Yeah. But we were, I was in sixth grade and he was a senior. So there was no like romantic connection. We just kind of knew each other and we are from a small town and our families actually live across the street from each other. So we knew each other's families and he um, was in the military and gone for a lot of Christmases. And then when he came back for one Christmas, I had graduated college and was a teacher and he had been all around the world and he was teaching me about red wine and how it rolls off your tongue, like a rose petal. And I was <laughs> just a puddle. I was telling her <laughs> stories of being around the world and just yeah. all my experiences and Yep. And I said, I've always wanted to kiss you, which, you know, and thinking back was the wine talking, but I definitely <laughs> wanted it. And so I kissed him on the couch and then I, we never have been the same since. Yeah. It's, she she kind of grew up right in front of my eyes right there. Cause she was, yeah. we literally grew up across the street from each other. And like, I still saw her that night as a sixth grader, you know, and she laid one on me and it was like, all of a sudden, Whoa, you're a woman. <laughs> yeah and yeah so we talked almost every day since that that point and and that was almost like 17 years ago 18 years ago we've been married almost 16 years and like I said he was in the military and retired or was done with the military and we were trying to think of what we could do together what kind of a business we could do together and he had been reading a lot about e-commerce and stuff like that and he thought what a what about merging two of his passions, sex and e-commerce? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that sounded like a fun thing. And um, he thought, what about lube? Yeah. Everybody, we had found a lube that was really powerful for right. us. That opened a lot of doors and, you know, <laughs> literally. and um, <laughs> Lubricated things. <laughs> and made things good for us. And so we thought, why, let's do that for other people. And Denny, one of Denny's biggest passions is just, like helping people. And so yeah. he thought that was helping people and sex. Boom. A great marriage was born. Yeah. <laughs> and he calls, you know, my, my area, his honey pot. And so there was <laughs> a perfect name for a uh, product there. And then we live in South Dakota and CBD had just become legalized. So we thought yeah. honey pot, put some CBD in there. And it was just kind of all all came together yeah it was like a match made in heaven just like jesse and i yeah 
Beautiful. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And, and, um, you know, with the uh, romantic escapades piece, I always find that slowing things down, Denny massaging me, getting me ready for, you know, intimate moments is yeah. so helpful for us. And so when we were trying to think of what's another thing we could add that would help people become, you know, mm -hmm. intimate and touch each other. And so then we created romantic escapades, which has been huge for us too. We just love, love yeah. the smells, love to create. Yeah. It was really fun. We kind of have a floral. We put a rose smell into romantic escapade and the, the, after we, it took months to get it designed and to create it. And then finally we got to try it and I gave her a massage and we made love yeah. that night and it's got a really a rose smell to it. And uh, maybe dating myself but my first concert was bon jovi and so after i love that after we made love we uh <laughs> we turned on bed of roses by bon jovi <laughs> and <laughs> laid in the bed just like whoa that was awesome yeah i gotta tell you the um the massage oil it's the greatest massage oil on the planet i'm not joking and anybody listening it's not like i know these guys like really well <laughs> it's not like, I'm like oh yeah i know these guys i'm just pumping it up I've been in the spa fitness industry for over 20 years, tried so many massage oils. This is the greatest massage oil on the planet. Yeah. Like it never stops yeah, gliding ever. Yeah. It, <laughs> I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, it really, it really is. I was surprised by that the first time we used it because I've used other massage oils, obviously. And I was like, whoa, this stuff like really <sighs> keeps going, you know, it keeps and going. I like, the, I like that when the smell. So if we, you know, it gives me a massage in the bed, like the next day when I wake up and smell it, I just am reminded like, oh yeah, that went down last night. Yeah, it went that down. Happened. That it happened. Went down. So this was, this was actually a really, uh, you know, kind of behind the scenes, funny part of developing this. And we had about four or five different scent uh, combinations and we got those samples from the manufacturer. And basically we have a, five kids we have four girls and one boy and we basically went through the family and had everybody smell all the different samples <laughs> and then we rated them all and so basically the one we came up with to take to market was rose orange grapefruit and vanilla and and that Beautiful. became the scent palette for romantic escapade wow it's incredible so what's been the reaction to this from other people you know you talk about sex it's a fun thing it should be more open i feel but sometimes people get a little strange talking about it but how has it helped a lot of people that you've been you know had have tried the product yeah so a lot of the customers who have bought and provided us feedback or um we've got a another avenue where people communicate with us through fantasy escapades where they can share like their fantasies or experience or stuff like that. Um, it's been really powerful. There's been emails that have come from customers that said, Hey, we love what you guys do. This has changed our sex life. Um, there's been fantasies and um, other things that have been submitted to us. Uh, we just sat down. <laughs> we had, we had a, a uh, customer who bought from us and then, wanted to kind of share her story and I'll just share a little bit of it, but basically she lived a sexless life for 65 years. Well, marriage, Whoa. like yeah. she was she, married and she's had children, but you know, really like an intimate, passionate sex yeah. life. Like she right. had sex, she had kids, but nothing like where right. he was worried about her or anything like that. It was just like, yeah. did the deed. Yeah. Not yeah. a passionate sex life. It was transactional almost. Yeah. Yes, right. Yes. Yeah. And, like and a lot of times, way. and she, and she said a lot of times she had to be drunk or they had to be drunk to, to do it. Yeah. Right. You right. know? And, and so she, I'm using her words, you know, that yeah. during that first 65 years of her life, it was basically sexless, you know? And, and then she met somebody and, and has just a crazy story and is filled up four notebooks of new things she's tried since she was 65 years 81 old 81 new things she's tried with him that's what she wrote to us in her letter and we were denny and i were both like one two three, yeah. 81 <laughs> things but she had just shared you know on fan fantasy escapades the point of that is just like to connect to like put something out there that you maybe feel or think 
you are the only one in the world that thinks this or wants this. And then somebody else can read it and say like, okay, I'm not so, I'm not weird. I'm not crazy. Yeah. Like you said, sex is such a thing that everybody has sex, you know, but right. nobody, but people talking about it is so cliche and just kind of, you know, it's not something that you super openly talk about and yet everybody is doing it. And <laughs> so that is what we just wanted to kind of open that world of you are not crazy. You are not weird just because you think these different things. Yeah. I think one observation I had the other day, I was just thinking this while Jesse was talking. It, it's almost like, because advertising is a problem. It's a, it's a real struggle to actually have a sex positive thing like this out there, but you you basically get hand tied by the marketing programs that are out there like Google or Bing or, yeah, or, you know, what you can say. And it, it just kind of crushes your ability to market. But then I, Jesse and I were riding in the car the other day and it's like all these popular songs, you know, for as long as I've ever lived, like popular songs are roundabout talking about their experience with, relationships and love and and love making and you know some of the greatest songs are about you know the the muse who who uh inspired you to write this song and 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 uh just inspired you to you know live sexy, life sexy yeah songs, you know? yeah yeah and and so it's like you know they're writing songs but it's not like this direct you know talking about sex conversation and it just seems kind of like that's, you know, the way our society is. We can kind of talk around it. We can't talk yeah. directly about it. You know, it's really a fun, funny um, situation. And we should be talking directly about it. We should, you know, talk ab about it with our kids. You know, I, Jesse and I, we, we talk about being a sex positive family and just being open and honest and talking about the beauty of sex and sexuality. Yeah, I actually, my wife and I were literally just talking about this an hour ago and talking with our daughter about it and how the same thing, we should be open in discussing this. Um, yeah. And especially, you know, kids, they start thinking about this stuff pretty early and mm -hmm. they can start asking questions about it. You better start talking about it. <laughs> like with them. Yeah. 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 You Denny know. has always thought, let's beat the kids to the playground. Yeah. You know, let's talk about this before they hear it on the playground. And so that right. has kind of been our background is talking about it. So then when they hear things, you know, like, you know what a blowjob is, you know, right. they, and it's like not even a blowjob. It's like something completely different, <laughs> you know, right. and, yeah. and they're like, no, that's not what it is, no. you know, or whatever. And so that has been kind of our attitude. And, you know, we have had to say, this isn't your job to teach other people, but this is mommy yeah. daddy's job to teach you. And, um, yeah, our oldest daughter's 14 and so having those conversations as they get older is so important and Denny and I grew up differently he grew up in a very Catholic religious yeah. family they didn't talk about sex at all only that you shouldn't have it until you're married <laughs> and um mm -hmm. yeah my house was a little different my mom's an anatomy teacher so we always really knew about our bodies and you know we did have kind of the religious upbringing of you should wait until you're married just because of the responsibility of being pregnant, getting pregnant yeah. and things like that. But definitely that your body is a beautiful thing and things like that is how I grew up. Yeah. So, so Jesse's kind of my savior, I think in this way, like she's really allowed me to open up and she's, you know, been there and kind of like helped me come out of my, I don't know, <laughs> my closet. It's almost like, I feel like today I'm coming out of the closet as a heterosexual man like mm, you know interesting like i am attracted to women i like women you know yeah and it's kind yeah. of a and she's kind of like been there like it's it's okay you know like in a, in a it's okay like the first time we actually were intimate together like i was really down on myself the next day mm. you know mm -hmm. like really just because i didn't think it was right you know and and, I, and i'm we didn't even have sex like we were just kind of messing around right and that was kind of a hard drive for her because, you know, she had come down to Texas to visit me and, and she's like, what is going on? Who, like, I had fun last night, but who's this person this morning? That's yeah. all in his head. Very like shame, shameful. And had this idea that if we do mess around, then we're not right for each other. Like mm. that it, he didn't want it to mess up our relationship. And 
So that was kind of a hard, a hard position to be in, but he has definitely changed. Now he's more uh, open, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> and things like that. And so it's just like, you know, in, in our marriage, just kind of loving the people we are right now because, you know, people change and evolve and Most that's a beautiful definitely. thing. It is a beautiful thing. So what has that journey been like from that beginning point to now? Have you changed sexually during that time and emotionally, obviously, with that? Um, for me personally, I think I have really just kind of opened up. And I think one of the biggest things is I've stopped judging myself and and also stopped judging others. You know, it's like, I think when you're at least coming from a Catholic background, it's really easy to come away and just think, well, you know, they're sinning, or, you know, like this idea that other people are doing, doing it wrong, or they're sinning or something like that. That's kind of like this uh, pervasive attitude. And, and, and you don't, everything is internal, right? Like if, if you don't trust others, the root, the root of the causes, you're not trusting yourself. If you don't, if you're judging others, the root of the cause is you're judging yourself. That's my perspective on this. Right. And, and my journey has basically been dropping some of this stuff, you know, dropping the baggage and, and, and being easier on myself and, and not being so hard on myself. Um, but it, it's been a great journey. It's, you know, sexually, it's just been like when we were getting married or we, when we got married, it, that's when, our journey really started sexually and, and it's just been evolving and just blossoming and opening up, um, trying new things with each other kind of. And, and then I think one other big transition that I had and, and then this may be the, one of the titles from my uh, upcoming book, which is, uh, the best thing I did for my marriage is act like I wasn't married. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And, <laughs> And what I mean by that is um, when you, I don't know what your experience is, Darian, but when you get married, there's, there's this ability to just kind of relax into it and, and not continue to be a man and not continue to mm. show up and, and flirt and look her in the eyes yeah. and say, Hey, I want to be with you later. You know, I want to take you on a date and, and just kind of take the reins and, what happens when you're in a marriage and you've got kids and you, and especially in the military, like I'm gone flying all, all over the world. Well, who's running the house? You know, she's there, you know, taking on both the masculine and the feminine responsibilities and running it. And so then I come back, it's always kind of like a battle for, okay, you know, who, what roles are we taking on here? And one of the best things I've done is just like, you know what, I'm, you know, marriage is kind of this socio-religious construct yeah I, i'm just personally going to drop that like i'm committed to this woman i love her and i'm going to flirt with her and i'm going to woo her and i'm going to take her on dates and i'm going to you know continue to show up as a man yeah and he really has and that has been powerful for us um you know as we've been married 15 years with babies and pregnancies and nursing and stuff that's kind of a reason that we've even had to use the lube in the beginning is just yeah. my body and having babies and stuff like that and um you know there's been times where I really wanted it and he didn't because we didn't want to have a baby but my body wanted a baby you know mm -hmm. and so there's been those times where I was horny and he wasn't wanting to have a baby so he didn't but then there's been times where he's wanted it and I'm just wiped as a mom you know like I've been touched out today and right. just right. that you know, in 16 years, the ebb and flow of, you know, hot car sex to, you know, vanilla sex. <laughs> yeah. in the bed. Yeah. How you do it all the time. Like we should probably have sex tonight. You know, um, the, yeah. the, you I know, the journey of our relationship <laughs> is, you, you know, um, it's just, you know, kind of been really powerful how there's been ebbs and flows, but it's just after 16 years, we still, want each other so much yeah. in that way you know and it's powerful for us so i want to give you guys a big shout out this is like this is you guys actually don't know how important you are to me actually so mm -hmm. this is the beauty of life this is the incredible life we talked about connection so <clears throat> we got connected through uh layla london i believe yes 
Layla's yes. amazing. That was our that was our first podcast guest appearance. Right. She, and, and so much fun. So much fun. And so much talk about sex and everything. And I remember she's going, Oh, you got to talk to Dennis and Jesse. They have to be on your show. And I love their products. And I was like, and I had been getting into <clears throat> increasing sex communication. And I feel like we're very similar people. Like my my wife and I, we've been married 18 years. We've gone through a lot of the same stuff you guys have talked about. And I, you know, we got the product from you. And I said, we got to try this. And these are awesome people. And it was like mind blowing. And I just think like you've created something that's so beautiful and special. It just added another element to our sex life that yeah. wasn't there. And all honestly, that's that's because of you guys. Seriously, it's because of you guys. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> that is amazing. I mean, and just knowing Denny and his heart and stuff, that is why he want. That's why he wanted to do this. You know, yeah. we've had messages from women who've had surgeries and sex was painful, and now it's right. Now, now it's pleasurable again, and there's just no price tag for that. And um, you know, you just saying your message is so powerful for us, and you know, enough to like keep like we have to keep working on this, you know, because it's not an easy. Yeah. Um, well, well it's it's a challenge but like yeah, bu business challenge, is yeah. a challenge and of course. it's hard it's it's difficult but um they say anything worth doing is um yeah. anything tough is worth doing yeah it's gonna take take some time take yeah. some challenges some there's gonna be hurdles mm -hmm. um i was gonna share one aspect of of that journey and and that was i think it it basically comes back to shame and guilt again mm. um when we first started the business, we we created a fictitious name. And because we didn't necessarily like, okay, this is new to us. Do we want to put our faces out there? Do we want to put our names out there? And when we saw some of the success of it, and, and we knew that part of the business model is connecting with people and sharing your own story, we redesigned the website early this year. So like only months ago. So I think January, February timeframe, the new new website came out. And Jesse and I made the hard decision to like, let's make it our face. Let's make it our names. Let's like get to know our customers. And, and I think that kind of goes back to your question about what kind of journey have you been on? And it's that like dropping the shame, dropping the guilt, saying, hey, this is beautiful. This is wonderful. We're proud of this. We created this business and and we want to connect with you and let you know you're not alone. Yeah. And you but know, not an easy decision. How did you feel about, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because she, she actually, uh, on, on the sales pages and things like that, it was her face and, and name that was out there first, so... Yeah. And it was just kind of funny when we had a couple of TikToks out there and stuff. And my sister and my mom were like, what is going on? You know, <laughs> what are you guys doing? And, you know, that's just been a little bit of a hard piece of it because it does have such a stigma to it, you know, um, but it is powerful when we talk to, we have people who write us, you know, how it's been helping them. <laughs> so the pros just outweigh the cons, you know, when it comes to that and being proud of our products and proud of what we're doing well I, you know kind of jumping around here a little bit we we talked about that 65 year old woman who we connected with and she wrote us a letter well we wrote her a letter and we ended up setting up a coffee date she only lives an hour and a half away from us oh, wow. so we sat down and talked with her for two hours about her life and her experience and it was really powerful it was and it was one of the things that led jesse to and i to think about and you, you'll love this and we'll need your help. But we thought like, it would be great to do podcasts about this kind of stuff. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And to talk to people. So we've been on podcasts as guests, but like now Jesse and I are talking about opening up that umbrella, you know, fantastic escapades is about sex and sexuality and improving intimacy. Um, but we've been blogging as the Paquette family recently yeah. and, and we're, we just recorded yesterday. It was only a 15 minute recording, but our kind of our first podcast and 
And so we want to kind of go down that road and talk to other people and, and kind of open up the aperture of, you know, life 360. It's not just sex or sexuality, but it's kind of everything. It was such a good idea. I think you would easily get a lot of people to talk to. (laughs) I mean, yeah, because it's still, it's within kind of the sex category, intimacy, and you, you can get, you know, from just very regular folks to people in the adult industry, you can have such a huge spectrum of people to talk to who are going to is going to it's for everybody. It's literally for every. And you're also in a time when it's badly needed. I mean, people actually statistically are having less sex than ever right now, ever Hmm. in the history of humans right now. (laughs) So much research being done on this. It's it's mind blowing. And uh you know, I think like the average couple has sex like once a month at this point. Wow. It's crazy, right? <laughs> wow. And most yeah. and most young people, especially like millennial Gen Z, they're just not having sex. They're just not doing it. They're like they want to talk about it, but they, they they're like they're it's like too much pressure. They feel it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. So like you have plenty of people to talk to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think at this point. <laughs> It's and it's just like it is a it's a societal construct about the stigma. Like, what's the stigma? It's just something from a long time ago that people have not broken out of. Like, Mm -hmm. we need to talk about sex, you know, and the joyfulness of it and not this transactional aspect. A lot of people view it transactionally. A lot of people Mm -hmm. do, which is a shame because it's so amazing. Yeah, right. I know in talking to this um, customer of ours, she's just like, her eyes are just so opened, you know, that this was a possibility in her life and she didn't have for the first 64 years of it. It's just and crazy. that's, that is so sad because it is. it is such a gift. And I mean, I'm sure you've talked about this on your podcast before, but just for your health, your hormones, you know, all yeah. of that, the things that sex does for you. And yes. um, I think I read something about oxy oxytocin the other mm-hmm. day and I was like Denny we should have more morning sex because it's good for my oxytocin. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's what I've been telling you I've been telling come you come on Denny <laughs> yeah. I'm like sounds good a fine fine twist, fine twist whatever my arm. twist yeah. my arm and I think that's one of the fun things too as you know we're kind of in the done making baby stage so now sex is just for pleasure yeah and um just having fun with it you know after Denny talked to Layla or after he listened to one of hers, um, yeah. he made a sex bucket list. <laughs> I love that. I'm not sure I can hang with all of the, <laughs> the things on the list, but, you know, trying to do some of those things together and just keep it hot, you know, after yeah. 15 years, I'm sure after 18 years, you know, like you were saying with the um, romantic escapades and stuff, anything like that, like we have sex in the car or we have, yeah. you know, just flirting during the day and yes you know i was i was really inspired by layla you know she her whole story started with a bucket list of sorts that's right yeah that's right she wasn't having any sex either for a long time yeah for like four years that's crazy right and you hear now she's having all types of crazy sex yeah (laughs) i know (laughs) i i asked her i I don't know what i was thinking i was like you know layla tell tell me what what's the favorite part of your you know, business model and everything. She goes, well, the creating. Of the <laughs> Duh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but like Dennis, you were saying, like, <clears throat> that really stuck with me. Like you kind of stop, like you get married. It's almost like you stop, you relax, you take off the, the accelerator, you know, right. and you stop dating the person because you're like, well, we're married now. Like, right. Like that's supposed to mean something like, exactly. and that department. you know, it's weird. I've like really tried to follow that same thing you were saying, like we're married, but I'm acting like I'm not like I'm pursuing you on right. a regular basis. And that's I really how many hot. times, how many times have you uh, gone into the bedroom and just expected sex because you were married? Right. right. Yeah. Tons of times, especially it, in the beginning. It's, it's such a flaw. It's such a flawed premise. It is like you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta work it, like, man. Yeah. You gotta look at her and yes her up and like, flirt with her and sometimes we don't even make it to the bedroom you know sometimes no. yeah. sometimes it's like we're just flirting so much and he's like laundry room you know <laughs> yeah exactly now i think you need to move some laundry around like okay you know mm-hmm. and i do think 
that is a hot piece of it because I think even as the wife, you're like, well, I'm expected to have sex mm. tonight or I'm expected yeah. to like be sexy, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And it's a lot of pressure. There is just a lot of pressure on both sides. And I think that's why it's powerful, your podcast and things like this, where people can listen Thank and you. say, you know, this is something I could try or that might help my marriage. Do you have a hard time uh, like relaxing into the feminine? at all like well, just kind of like letting go and like letting me lead or trusting me yes he knows i do because, <laughs> well, I'm, just, um, yeah. I'm, a I'm a horrible dance partner because i have a really hard time bowling um because i've had to be such a strong woman in so many ways in our relationship when he was deployed and things like that i've had to just handle it yeah. and so sometimes it's hard for me to take off my alpha pants and just relax into the feminine but when i have when he's like you know i have a babysitter or i'm taking you on a date I'm not telling you what we're doing, you know, just, you know, get dressed up and we're going to go. And it is just this relaxed feeling like letting your man lead you. Um, yeah. It's powerful when you can just take off that guard and just relax into that. And then we do have the times where I have to be the alpha and he's more of the beta, but it's powerful for us when I can just relax into that. Yeah. It's, I love love like the like I see you guys looking at each other and chat like there's you guys have a really sweet thing <clears throat> going like you can tell you've known each other a long time, but you can also mm -hmm. tell like you're really working at it, too. Which, yes. You know, I don't know if that makes sense, you know. Yeah, I do think I know exactly what you're saying, because it's true. <laughs> you know, it's like the long, hard work of staying in love. <laughs> yes, yes. And, <laughs> yeah. I never heard it put that way. The long, hard work of staying in love. Yes. Yeah. I think you think you get with somebody who just think it's so magical and doesn't take a lot of effort sometimes because it's like so, you know, you're really young and boom. But it, it but you, they don't tell you it takes a lot, lot of work beyond the first. Part. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I'm going to I'm going to tell you a short story about one of my favorite analogies with relationships. And it, it came from my experience flying formation in the Air Force and basically uh, my own experience of flying in the air force was when i was in pilot training i wanted to be great at formation flying and formation flying in is when they teach you to fly three feet off the wing of another airplane like the blue angels you know okay. thunderbirds okay. things like that where they look like they're yeah you know on top of each other yeah and so so you, you your lead aircraft is flying a stable platform and the second aircraft comes in and is three feet wing to wing and you got to stay there and the whole purpose is if you have to enter the weather following that lead aircraft, you have to be able to see them. If you're five feet or 10 feet off the wing, you lose sight and then you have to, you know, go lost wingman and, and fly on your own for the rest of the sortie. So that's the purpose of staying that close. But as a young pilot, I just wanted to be good at it. And it's just, it's just constant work. It's just like, you're in there, you're working. And, and then uh, basically I went into airplanes that didn't fly formation. Uh, I went into the C-17, but then I went back as an instructor pilot. And this is where the story gets good. I was doing the formation, uh, curriculum and it was rich was the guy's name. He was my instructor. And I was, you know, just down on myself again. And the, the sortie got over. I felt like I didn't do well. I was all over the place. I was working too hard. And I came back and I told Rich, I was like, I just want to be good at formation. And he stopped me. He said, Denny, you are good at formation. And it it was at that moment that it clicked that like, that's just what formation is. It's just the work of it. Yeah. You know, when you, when you're a little bit low, you come up, when you're a little bit high, you come down, when you're a little bit out, you come in, when you're a little bit back, you come forward, you know, and it's just this constant moving and, and staying in formation. You're a little bit out of position. You come back into position, position. And it's a great analogy for relationships in our relationship, because that's what it is. It's, it's like, you think like, Oh, you're exhausted from this work, but that's what a relationship is. It's just, that's the work of it. All the yeah. Time. Yeah. It mm -hmm. totally is a lot and, of, and as soon as, it, yeah. And as soon as you accept it, then it's like, Oh, okay. I'm good at relationships. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we have had a lot, we have had a lot of challenges in our 16 years, um, probably more than other people, but that is what um, 
has made our marriage so strong and really, you know, as Denny's evolved and changed and wanted to try new things. And I have like loving him how he is now, you know, and celebrating who he is now, because there's been times when I've, I've been like, okay, when I first was with you, you couldn't even like, you know, fool around with me without feeling bad and now you have the right. sex bucket list of like maybe we, should bring another, <laughs> maybe we should bring another person in you know like you know like i have to like i've loved right. you here and i'm trying to figure out how to you know roll with you here and i think that's one of the most powerful things of us is just the total unconditional love that we both feel yeah from the other person i feel totally unconditionally loved by him he knows he's unconditionally loved by me um and, you know, that's a powerful thing for our kids to watch. That's a powerful thing for our friends that we're friends with, yes. that they know that about us, you know. Man, so it's, I don't want people to think that it's been easy or that it's like, all oh, you know, fairy tale, because that I found out that quick that life is not a fairy tale, but oh. he really is my prince. I it's love just, that. It you guys it are amazing. Look like yeah. it does. <laughs> yeah, like, you guys yeah. are such wonderful people. Seriously, you remind me of my wife and I. It's like we talked about this, like the person like if you've been married as long as you guys have and I have, you know, you're you're changing, you're evolving over time. And in many ways, you may be married to a different person later on down the line. And it's accepting that, you know, you're both evolving and it's OK that you're moving in this direction, you know, and. I think that's what hurts a lot of people is they're like, I don't know you anymore. And they just don't accept it. They don't want to accept it. They want the person that they saw a long time ago. You know, right. it's like, but this yeah. person actually is probably better <laughs> than that person. Yeah. That's what Denny you know? said. Like, I'm more me now than yeah. I was then. Right. Yes. I think isn't there, there's a meme, uh, you know, it's one person saying to the other, you've changed. And then the other person says back, we're supposed to. Yeah. I think yeah. Like a, <laughs> yeah. A butterfly in a, yeah. And it's a caterpillar yeah. that turns into a butterfly. Yeah. Like yeah. we're, we're supposed to change. Yeah. 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 That's such a beautiful thing. I really think like, I mean, I look at my 20 year old self. We're nothing alike. We're nothing alike. I'm 44. I, yeah. I don't, I mean, I know that person, but we're really light years away from each other. And that's a good thing. It's, you know, it's <laughs> in like more a positive stepwise progression. Right. Or that. And I just love what you said, the hard work of staying in love. I'm not going to forget that. That's like, that's powerful. That's yeah. power. It uh, needs to be pod, said. Podcast right? Podcast title. Yeah. <laughs> the hard work, because it's, I think people get so worked into the whole getting married or this whole, this euphoria you feel in the beginning. It's like, it's a, love is like an incredible drug. It's like, it, it like turns off the prefrontal cortex and a lot of people you do weird stuff you would never do. You say things you'd never say, you know, your reasoning yeah. kind of goes out the window a lot of the time, yeah. you know, and it's, but you don't recognize the, the long term is like a settling in and growing and changing. And I don't think that's talked about enough, you know? Yeah. It's, I, my parents, you know, are still together. First marriage, Denny's parents are still together. First marriage, so we both witnessed, you know, our fam parents working on their marriage. And I had a boyfriend before Denny, and he, his parents had gotten divorced when he was young. Yeah. And he, you know, as we kind of started to talk about, you know, is this for marriage or whatever, he was like, I just don't understand why it's so hard, mm. you know. And I'm like, that's how it works. Like, it's <laughs> not easy to love someone else and think no. of someone else and um think of what the other person wants like we're selfish in nature and yeah. obviously that wasn't the right relationship for me but you know that was an eye-opening thing for me like I know marriage is going to be hard because I watched people do it and it's super rewarding like hard yes. maybe is even the right word you know like it's going to be have challenges and things like that but it's rewarding way more and he just had never seen that so he didn't understand like why does yeah. it have to be so much work it should be easy if we're supposed to be together and and that is, you know, Denny and I have lived that every day. You know, we are not always happy with each other, but we just yeah. <laughs> love each other and he'll make <laughs> me laugh. And then it's like, it's just dissipated and we work through it. And our kids see that, you know, we're definitely like sickening to them sometimes just with our yeah. looks and kisses and touches. Yeah. And, but Denny's that, asked them that. Uh, uh, go ahead. I was just going to say Denny's asked them, you know like they just love that we're in love. They love that we yes. care about each other. And mm -hmm. 
and they can tell it's raw and real and they know we're imperfect, but that we really are working at this. And, and that's just the best thing we can put out there as a couple with, with the yeah. business is that we really are just like our customers and we're just constantly working at it too. Right. Jesse said something in there that, that made me think of ease and delight. Right. And I think when I'm not in my integrated masculine, let's call it, there, there's so many terms that talk sure. about masculine and feminine, but just this integrated masculine, like you're, you're okay. When you're not grounded as a man, um, you, you react, right? Like she's upset. She's uh, barking at you about the dishes or something like that. And you're and and you want to come back with like anger or frustration or something like that. And when I'm in my best moment as a man, I'm grounded. I'm a frame. She can have emotions and I can be there and not make fun of her, but just ease and delight. Like playful. it's all right. Yeah. Playful, playfulness, yeah. you know, like it's all going to be all right. I'm going to get to the dishes. Mm -hmm. I got them, mm -hmm. you know, or yeah. whatever it is. And it diffuses the whole thing. It's, it's so amazing. Like, I don't know the, the things I wish I would have learned as a, a boy. Yeah. You know? Um, because it's really that ability to hold that frame to not be, um, I don't know, to waver on yeah. your, on your groundedness. And I think kind of like you were talking about, we've heard from this lady the other day and from our, some of our parents' friends, they live in a sexless marriage, but even like not even a friendship marriage. Like they just don't even talk for, we heard two of years. one guy that didn't talk to his wife for two years. Obviously oh, they were in a bad place. Wow. You know, they, they must've just been kind of living light yeah. separately, but not wanting to just kind of call it what it was. But mm. I mean, and then, this lady was saying, you know, we just didn't even talk. We just did try to like live without each other. And yeah, um, obviously those relationships, you know, are hard and headed for a bad direction, but that's one of the things I can't even imagine it, <laughs> you know, like oh. I can't even imagine it because as much as we are lovers, you know, we do this business together. We're best friends. We want to hang out with each other as much as we can. And like you said, people are having sex once a month. I mean, gosh i just feel for them that yeah it's pretty you know, regular that there's, yeah that there's so much that needs to be done and and hopefully they do the hard work of you know yeah. working on it because it is so rewarding in that way mm -hmm. yeah i just think the work part is not told to people but you know there <clears throat> so much of society is built on getting having this big wedding and having like this event or that mm -hmm. marriage is kind of like this hey you got married but you did it you finally did it. I mean, like the mo the rest of it is like, oh, uh, what do we do now? <laughs> you know, it's like right. nobody yeah. talked about that. You know, I know. I don't know if you had this, but the vows, you know, we said like the traditional wedding vows. Yeah. And I remember thinking maybe three or four months in, you know, the first couple of years are so hard. because yeah. You're just blending your lives together. That's right. And, you know, like for better or for worse and i was like okay i did not know what i was saying up there like, <laughs> i'm just saying like for better or for worse you know like sure would you <laughs> yeah yeah let's do it i've for tested for those for limits for worse. <laughs> yeah you know, like, it's like you pushed like it a you, little bit yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's like you don't know exactly what you're saying and maybe that's why every more people get married you know and then there's this 50 percent divorce yeah. rate but it is for better or for worse you know yeah if marriage is what's right for you and right you choose to do that yeah. And that number is dropping the divorce rate, not because people are getting better at marriage. It's just because younger people aren't getting married. Mm -hmm. They're just okay. not entering into it for them. Yeah. They, this is crazy. But I had a lady on who uh, her research is all on like Gen Z um, relationship behavior. So these are all your people in college and stuff. And and to them, dating is like marriage to them. Apparently mm -hmm. they see like going on a date is like the apex. Like okay. it's there's nerve wracking for them to just get to that point. Marriage is like at the out. It's like out in space, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, wow, wow. Like, I just want to like a date would be incredible, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's a different wow. world in mm -hmm. many ways in that sense, you know? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
I just want to be like informed on all this stuff, you know, just because I think it helps me to learn what's going on out there. And then I can have an intelligent conversation with other people, you know, because a lot of people think they a lot of people wonder how much sex other people are having. They don't they don't know, like, what's the right amount? What's that? They don't know anything. They just Mm -hmm. because people don't want to talk about it. Right. (laughs) You don't want to, like, talk about stuff like that. You know? Yeah. And I. I watched or saw something on Instagram recently, and it's a college professor that talks about sex and sexuality. And yeah, um, it's just really powerful. You know, she's teaching young college students about it, and there's tons of misconceptions. And yeah, so she's kind of taken to Instagram and and tried to educate people, and it's really powerful. Yeah, I mean, you're teaching, you're talking to your kids, and I talk to my child. But like what happens when you have parents who are just like they don't know what to talk about. They mm-hmm. if they're not having sex, they're in a in a in a relationship with their spouse or whatever, and they're just like, it's not happening. How do they talk to their kids about it? I mean, like right. they're just not going to talk to their kids about it. Right. They're just gonna yeah. be like, no, don't do it. Avoid it. <laughs> avoid it. It's avoid it. Hard. It's just avoid. It's too hard, right? Yeah. And I think we got it. That's why I like having people like yourselves on all different people. It's like, no, we're going to we're going to go head first into this, man. Like the, the most dangerous thing is closed mindedness. And not that's dangerous to me because then yeah, think about your right. kids. They're going to get that information from someone else who doesn't have their best interest, probably. Mm-hmm. You know, it might as well be coming from you. <laughs> you know, right. like- and, and we do have such a such an open relationship with them and our kids are obviously different humans you know like our yeah. oldest is very private or our oldest is very like open with her body and stuff yeah. that she'll walk around you know and then our second daughter is very private and you know closes the door and stuff like that yeah. but they both come to us with questions like we've heard this thing how many times have you done this is this a real thing you yeah. know and denny's definitely more open than i am which is funny you know considering <laughs> <laughs> but his his dad didn't really share who he yeah. was with his with denny and his brothers and so denny has this mission like my kids are gonna know me the yeah. good the bad the ugly and, and they're very good to him you know that we yeah. don't we've had conversations i would be surprised if other 14 and 12 year olds have had with their dad you know <laughs> just you I know, love that. who are you and what do you what do you think about yeah. this and he's very honest with them and what do you believe what do you think yeah what do and you it's want? we're very similar humans man <clears throat> we approach <laughs> things very similar i like literally have told my wife many times i want my daughter to know everything about me uh-huh. i don't want to get her to be an adult and go this is like this whole part of my dad's life i don't know about i'm like right. we're gonna obliterate that like yeah <clears throat> this is me man like, yes, you, you know. guys are very yeah. similar that way yeah i'm a little more of like private like you know um if they ask well them. it's funny because i am very open and was definitely more um you know sexual growing up and yeah. college and all of that and so we were cleaning through our garage and the girls were finding pictures of me and my girlfriends in like you know, panties and, you know, no tops and stuff. And they're like, why do you never have clothes on? And (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, well, college is a fun time. Yeah, it is. And, um, (laughs) but now, you know, and I'm like, Denny, you should lock the door for if this is going to go down because I don't want them coming in here. It's like, they see us, you know, then they see a healthy relationship (laughs) having sex. I'm like, nobody wants to see their parents. (laughs) (laughs) Let's just, let's just know that. Let's just call it what it is, man. (laughs) To see that. Jesse has made a good distinction about that though. It's the difference between being, um, shameful and yeah, shameful because my attitude comes from letting go of shame and right. guilt right. about it and just like i'm not going to be shameful about it and and jesse has a good point that you know sex it doesn't have to be shameful or or you don't have to walk away with guilt from it but it it is and can be a private thing right but as you know there's a lot of people that don't have private sex yeah too. yeah that's true <clears throat> that's but yeah i mean they'll they'll know when they come and the door is locked they're like oh they're having sex oh okay. <laughs> so, you know which i'm like okay well that's healthy that you that this you're is the best that, household but... this is great yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh it's funny uh we actually lack this is the office that we're talking in here yeah and we locked the door the other day just to finish a conversation <laughs> i don't 
you know, I don't know if you and your wife can finish a conversation with your daughter around. Yeah. But when you have five kids from 14 to three, it's like, as soon as we get real about something, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> like somebody is there. So we locked the door the other day just to finish a conversation and talk a little bit about business and where we were going and what we were doing. And we come out and our daughters, our older daughters come up and go, what were we doing? <laughs> <laughs> what, what was going on? Yeah. I, yeah. I was like, What's oh, happening? We, were, we were talking about some things that we had to handle and now we're out. <laughs> yeah. She was like, oh, you're talking. <laughs> yeah. right like, so the, talking. yeah this is the invest the, the investigator daughter what, what were you up to what were you doing <laughs> it's so good yeah. <laughs> oh what a joy i tell you what i mean this has been a wonderful time i think it's just because it's been just a regular conversation that's the best thing you know i yeah. feel like an interview it's just a discussion you know yeah. about life so uh please tell everyone uh you know they're gonna hear the ad uh, that I loved reading about your products going to be on there, but please tell everyone how they could connect with you and your products. Well, the, uh, the main one for the products, honey pot is our silicone based CBD infused lube. And that was our first product. And then romantic escapade is our, uh, intimate massage oil and is also CBD infused. You can go to, uh, fantastic escapades.com and you can access those products there and learn a little bit about us. And then we also have um, on that site, if you go to Escapades, so it'd be fantasticescapades.com slash escapades, that will go to a location where there's a online form and they can um, either send us mail, we've got a PO box, or they could do an online form and submit a love story, a love letter, uh, a fantasy they a have. A kink. Yeah, yeah whatever, whatever they have. And that's kind of all on the website. And then um, I know we sent you a coupon code too. Yep. You're, <laughs> I didn't review it before this talk, but do you remember <laughs> what the coupon code is? Well, I believe it's like Darian. Well, it's either Darian 10 sure. or something like that. But uh, yeah. it's in every show note of every episode of all the podcasts so um so the, yeah there's a coupon code and it's for 10 percent off for yep. your listeners and i'll just look it up while we're talking well you know there's and everybody has anybody who listens to it a lot of people are listening again every episode has this coupon link in it every single episode that comes on out from here and it, until whenever it's yeah i automatically put it in every show notes uh, so people will be seeing it on a regular yeah. basis, uh, for that. Um, I really believe in <clears throat> the product, but what's even better is just believing in you guys is, uh, and what you're about. And I love connecting you with people and I want to connect you with more people and just, I just want to be helpful. Um, yeah. I want to yeah, help thank you, you guys. for what you do. Thank you for what you do with your podcast and, you know, just thank your you. positive light out there is powerful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you that so much. That coupon code is Dr. D 10. So doctor spelled out D 10. Perfect. Yeah. On there. You won't be sorry. I'm telling you, <laughs> you're going to be loving life <laughs> big yeah. time. It's right in the room back there, man. I'm telling you. It's, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and, you know, the, the lube, the massage, all of it's amazing. All of it. My wife was a little apprehensive about the lube because she has a certain kind she likes. Mm -hmm. oh, so no, no, we have to try this. We have to. And it was it blew her mind. It blew her Good. mind. Yeah. Yeah. The, and we have perfected the we have perfected formula. the formula. So yeah. we are proud of it. Oh, it's definitely perfected. I could tell you that. <laughs> right now. <laughs> thank you both thank so you much. Both. I appreciate you both. I'll be in touch. OK, yeah, thank you. Thank you.